Hi, Rich Spazano here from Digitally Fearless, and this is part eight of the Powerful Toolbar. In this video, we're going to talk about the Assistant, because the Assistant can do so much more than give you warnings like it's rasterizing something. The Assistant's there to help you, and you should learn how to use it. So let's get started. So I'm going to open a new file. It really doesn't matter what file it is. And we're going to click on the assistant. And the assistant has all these things that you need to know about. So do you ever try and paint on the canvas and nothing happens? Something like this. I'm grabbing my paintbrush. I have a color. It doesn't matter what color. And I paint and nothing happens. Well, that's because the assistant is set to take no action. So you have to make sure to change that. And why would you want the assistant to take no action? Well, sometimes you might have a photo here, and then you don't want to accidentally paint on top of the photo. You want to make sure that nothing ruins your original photo. What you should do then, which I like to do, is take the assistant and say, add new pixel layer and paint. That means it doesn't matter what is on your screen. Uh, let's say there's these, these, these two hearts. I'll give it a color. Just to, just to let it look good. So it doesn't matter what's on your screen. If you go to paint something now, and that is not a pixel layer, it will paint, but it'll add it to a new layer. So you're not destroying the layer below. And that's pretty important. You don't want to destroy it. If you want to rasterize it later, you can uh, onto this layer, but at least it lets you protect the original layer. So let's talk about the next thing. Let's create a vector, I don't, any shape you want. There you go, and give it a fill. Okay, so this is now a vector layer. Now, if you have rasterize layer and erase, I'm going to show you this. What will happen is, remember this is now a vector which says curve. If you do this, it is no longer a curve. You cannot fix it. You cannot change it in any way. It is now a flat pixel layer. And I didn't want to do that. So now let's change, let's undo that. Let's undo that and turn that back into a curve, which is a vector layer. So now instead, if you do place mask layer inside and erase, if that's what your assistant is set to do, now if you click on erase and you do this, it will erase it, but it's a mask. You're not ruining that pixel layer. For example, if I touch this and I go to the node tool, I can still move it around. It's still a, it's still a vector layer, and it's just the mask that's masking out the erase tool. So that's pre it's pretty important. So let's get rid of that mask. The next tool is other brushes on vector layers. So if I have it set to if I have other brushes on vector layers set to take no action and I grab a brush such as the color replacement brush and I rub across it, nothing will happen. So I'm going to undo that. And now if I change this other brushes to vector layer and I say rasterize, and now I try to use the color replacement brush, it's now a pixel layer it is no longer vector so whoops and we changed it to a pixel layer so you may not want to do that that's up to you I'm gonna undo that and change this back to a curve uh, what else brush tool sharing okay so brush tool sharing I have as smart sharing between tools so let's just move this out of the way remember when we we have a brush we can add a new pixel layer so I'm just going to take a regular paintbrush and I'll make it this size, doesn't really matter, and I will paint, right? And then I will go to the color replacement brush, and you notice how the size is exactly the same. So I can go like that, and like that. It's exactly the same. But now if I change the size of that brush to small like that, and then I go back to the paintbrush, it's the same size. So if I wanted to go right over the same thing, it's the same size. And so it's smart sharing between tools. 
which is the opposite of brush shared between all tools, which means what you, you choose a brush size, and that's the brush no matter what brush tool you pick. Every tool has the same size and same brush. So I'm keeping mine on smart sharing between tools. Now applying filters to vector layers. Let's say you take no action. Let's get rid of this first. Okay, remember this is now still a vector. It says curves here. It's a vector layer right there. And just in case, let me just duplicate it and control or command J and just give it another color. It doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure I have more than one. Okay, so apply filters to vector layers. If you take no action and then you go up to filters up here, every all of these filters are, are blurred out. You cannot apply it to a vector layer. But if you go to, if you say take no, if you say rasterize instead of take no action and you go to filters, distort, let's try uh, let's see, ripple. And I can ripple that all the way up. The problem is, once you do that, it is now a pixel layer. It is no longer a vector layer. You can't do any change in that shape. So that's really important. It's just as long as you know. And the assistant usually warns you. See this where it says alert when assistant takes action? It warns you that it took action just in case you want to undo that right away. Uh, so I like to have the alert on. You don't have to, if you don't want to be bothered with the assistant, just ch uncheck these boxes and that'll be fine. Okay, so let's bring in some pictures. Uh, let's say, I don't know, scene. And here, I will pull this one in. And then I will pull this one in. And let me resize them to fit the canvas here. There's one and there's two. Okay, so now here we have two photos. And I am going to rasterize them just to make life easier because some things work with rasterize and some don't. Okay, so let's get the assistant back. Now, add adjustment layer to selection. If I want to add an adjustment layer to this, I'll put this one on top because that's the, that's the top layer. If I want to add an adjustment layer to that and I go to the adjustments and I say, let's say, um, hue, let's do hue and saturation. And I want to change the color. You see what happens? It took the adjustment and put it on top of everything, just like that which means it's adjusting everything. And sometimes you, then you have to go down and drag it here and you could very easily now only adjust the top one because it's clipped to it. It's a child of the original. If you find yourself doing that a lot, then let the assistant help you with that. So let me delete this. And I don't know where this one came from, but so adding adjustment layer to selection instead of add adjustment as a new layer, Add it as a child layer. So now whatever layer you pick, when you do an adjustment, and let's say we did that same hue and saturation, it put it down there for you. So it's a child layer. And so you can have like 20 layers and you want to adjust one of the middle ones and nothing below it, then have this set for add adjustment as a child layer. And let's do the same thing with mask. <clears throat> if you had the mask as a new layer, and I say add mask to new layer. If I put a mask right here and then I start creating, painting my mask. So make sure this is set to black and white. You hit the D key to turn it to black and white. And then you start, and then I'll, let me move this in front here. So now if I start painting in black, I am putting a mask over everything. So if you look at that, if you, you'll see that mask is there. And the reason you see underneath is because you're seeing the white canvas. But what if you just wanted that to just be part of this? Now the mask becomes a child of that layer, so you could drag it there. But if you find yourself doing that a lot, let's undo all of that, let's delete this mask. If you find yourself doing that really a lot of times,
Then say adding mass to selection. Instead of new layer, add it as a child layer. So now, if you're on that top and you say add mask, the mask is on the child layer, which means now I could start painting and showing it through. So that's how that works. So I prefer to have it on the child layer, and if I really want to want, want it all the way on top, I can just drag it to the top. So it's your choice again. And the same thing with adding filters. Let's do that same, same, same idea. Let's just get rid of these. Same idea as adding filters. If I want to only add filter to this layer, add filter to child layer. If I have this layer selected, I can go to layer, live filter layers, and say uh, twirl. And when I twirl, it's only twirling that. Now that let's delete that. And that's different than saying add as a new layer because now I can go to layer live filter layer and distort and twirl and then I twirl it's twirling both of them both layers are being twirled I could pull it down here and then it's only twirling one and it's what I'm trying to say is if you find yourself pulling it down often then set it to add filter as child layer so I think that's it and I hope you found this tutorial useful uh, this is number eight and number nine is coming soon, so please subscribe and have a good day.